Hello, and welcome to the Youth Making Ripples virtual film series. I'm Dr. Philip Gravenis. And I'm Dr. Lauren Post, and we are the founders of Youth Making Ripples. We're both marine scientists that have dedicated our careers to conservation of the oceans. And in 2013, we started Youth Making Ripples to share some of those stories with the public. Each year, we ask K-12 students to make short, less than five minute long, films about the ocean. And the response over the last seven years has been incredible and inspiring. So today we want to share with you some of those stories. Now we're going to turn it over to one of our board members who's going to introduce you to the films. Hello, and welcome to Youth Making Ripples virtual film series. My name is Honey Whitney. I'm a teacher, a marine scientist, a Youth Making Ripples board member, and your host. This virtual film series is called Ecosystem Explorations. Our Earth is covered with 71% water. That's a lot of water. There's a reason why it's called the Blue Planet. And of that 71%, 96.5% of that is the ocean itself. That's a lot of different places where things can live. Now, most of the time, though, when people think of habitat, they think of things above the surface of the waves. But with that much of our planet covered in water, the majority of the places where things live are below the surface and around. This series of ecosystem explorations is to tell you about some of those amazing habitats that live around our ocean ecosystems. Our first one is called Black and White, a nostalgic look at the Florida Keys and what used to be there and what may be able to be saved again. When I was a kid, my grandfather told me a story. It fascinated me. He was diving off the ledge of Carey's Fort Reef when a large school of tuna swam right up before his eyes. Hundreds of blackfins, skipjacks, bonitas, a sight he will never forget. Sight I probably will never see. I dive in the same place as he did, but now I barely see any marine life. I look to my left and my right, and I see an endless graveyard, wasteland of coral. A whole ecosystem destroyed in my short life before my own eyes. It's a catastrophe. And now, due to the demands of the commercial world, all I see is black and white. But can we not return to the days of color? The days that I remember as a child? We could bring back the color the life. We could bring back the beauty. But only if we dare. Dare to make a difference. I want my kids to see the ocean as I saw it growing up. Right now, I fear for them. I don't know about you, but after watching that, I have a sudden urge to go diving in the Florida Keys to see what's still there. Our next film is going to take us all the way across the country, thousands upon thousands of miles away, over to Puget Sound in Washington so we can learn about a species of special concern that makes up its own habitat. Our next film is called Eelgrass.
Eelgrass is one of the single most important living things in the Puget Sound. This seemingly simple plant has been designated a species of special concern due to its critical role in shaping entire ecosystems. Eelgrass is commonly found from the intertidal zone to as deep as 30 feet. It is abundant along the coast of the Puget Sound where it creates a home for many species of small animals. Animals like these crabs seek out eelgrass because it can provide protection and camouflage from predators. It also provides a sanctuary for the young of larger animals to grow up in. However, eelgrass is not just beneficial for the animals living in it. Meet the apex predator of the intertidal zone, the great blue heron. This particular heron is going fishing. As she moves through the eelgrass, she is careful to maintain her stealth. Any sudden movements could disturb her prize. Each step she takes is carefully planned until she finds a suitable place to begin hunting. The great blue heron is known for having what seems like endless patience. She will sit here, barely moving, for as long as it takes. Finally, she notices a fish. She strikes with laser-like precision and quickly seizes her target. Great blue herons, like many predators, rely on eelgrass as a place to regularly find food. But eelgrass is not just important because of all the predator-prey relationships it sustains. Eelgrass fundamentally changes and shapes any ecosystem it's present in. Eelgrass is responsible for slowing currents in turbulent areas and keeping sediment in place. This improves the quality of habitats and water in areas surrounding eelgrass. In places like this beach, eelgrass ensures that shorelines remain intact. Unfortunately, due to the value of waterfront real estate, many eelgrass beds have been destroyed or cleared out in the Puget Sound, and harmful seawalls are constructed. The close proximity of homes to the ocean also assures that there's more runoff to potentially harm eelgrass populations. In recent years, eelgrass populations in the Puget Sound have been on the decline due to human influence. It is our responsibility to recognize this plant for how important it really is. Some ways you can help our eelgrass are to keep in mind that almost all water in the Seattle area eventually drains to the sound. So pick up after your pets, wash your car at the car wash, and try to minimize your use of fertilizers and pesticides. Also, if you're ever at a beach, avoid walking on eelgrass. Not only will this kill the animals living in the eelgrass, but it may damage the grass itself. If we keep all this in mind, we can help ensure that the eelgrass beds continue to provide all their valuable services and our shorelines can stay healthy and beautiful. Never quite mastered being able to stalk just like a heron does. And I definitely spent a lot of time watching those moves and learning a lot about eelgrass. We have a lot of different types of seagrasses that live in the ocean and surrounding ecosystems like estuaries and even in some freshwater ecosystems. Now our next video is actually gonna tell you a little bit more about the different types of seagrasses that you find around our earth, as well as doing it in a multilingual way. So let's go on over to talking about seagrass science. Take a gander. Hi, I'm David, a science ambassador for the Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science. And I'm Casey. Did you know that seagrass meadows are a very important marine ecosystem? Dr. James Forkern talked to us about how they provide habitat, food, and nursery areas for many different organisms. Seagrasses are really important, uh, and in places like South Florida, they make up the largest part of the coastal marine community. There are 18,000 square kilometers of seagrasses in South Florida. It's about the same size as the state of Connecticut and Rhode Island put together. Seagrasses are flowering plants. Most of them have a male flower and a female flower that live on different plants. Male flowers open up and release pollen. That pollen is carried by the water currents from the male flowers to the female flowers. They become fertilized and then fruit grows. The first thing that needs to happen in order to save these seagrasses that are declining rapidly is people have to understand the importance of seagrass. They have to know that the fisheries that they depend on to feed the people actually have a base at seagrass. And they also have to realize that these seagrasses are very important for keeping their water clear and preventing erosion and, and stopping the movement of sand around during big storms. Once those values are recognized, however, then only then will people start weighing what they're doing in the watershed against the unintended consequences in the seagrass meadow.
Me Cantan Las Diebras Marinas. Our next film is going to take us above the surface of the water and go around some of the cool areas that we have more in the tropics. And also it has something to do with zombies? Hmm, let's learn about mangroves. Mangroves are essential to our ecosystem and considered to be part of one of the most productive and diverse ecosystems on the planet. They thrive in fresh, brackish, and salt water at tropical latitudes. It is estimated that mangroves provide billions of dollars worth of services, such as providing ecosystems, filtering water, controlling flooding, just to name a few. The root system of mangroves can absorb large amounts of water, changing the tidal impact and absorbing the force of waves. They also protect against hurricanes, typhoons, and other coastal systems. One study actually found that there is a correlation between the loss of mangroves and the increase in death toll from destructive coastal systems. Mangroves also help prevent erosion by building a muddy bottom of sand and silt and filtering out and absorbing nutrients. This leads to better water visibility, which is relied on by other plant life and prevents harmful algae blooms. This also absorbs four times as much carbon than a terrestrial forest, which is stored in its roots, creating a blue carbon reserve. The structure of mangroves provide shelter and food for other organisms. Some species, such as the mangrove crab, the mangrove snail, and even the royal Bengal tiger, lives exclusively in areas with mangroves. The leaves and branches of the plant provide habitat and shelter for birds. While the roots of the plant create shelter, nursery, and habitat for fish, insects, marine plants, crustaceans, and even reptiles like alligators and crocodiles. There are over 80 different types of mangrove species found all around the world. There are three types of mangroves in Florida. Red mangroves, black mangroves, and white mangroves. Red mangroves grow least inland, sometimes in several feet of water. They are identifiable by their long red roots called prop roots. Black mangroves grow closer inland, right on the coastline. They are identifiable by their black snorkel roots. They stick out of the ground. White mangroves live furthest inland and their roots are entirely underground. Unfortunately, mangroves are being cut down at an alarming rate. It is estimated that mangroves are being cut down three to five times the loss of a terrestrial forest. Tampa Bay alone has lost 44% of their coastal wetlands, including mangroves. Mangroves are disappearing due to multiple factors. The first is urbanization. People, especially in Florida, want to live by the coast and want their homes where mangroves already reside. In other countries, mangroves have been destroyed for industry. East Asia has lost 35% due to shrimp pools alone. Industries such as wood, cosmetic, perfume, and medicine are all dependent on mangroves. But most of all, mangroves are in danger because of climate change. There's too much water and not enough muddy buildup to support a mangrove habitat. There is also the migration of invasive species, which disturbs the delicate ecosystem. In our current climate state, we cannot afford to lose any more mangroves because of how much they support and maintain our ecosystem and our fight against climate change. There is hope, but only if you get involved. There are local organizations who already plan restoration projects, trash cleanups, educate the public, and work tirelessly to help protect our ecosystem. Only together will we make a difference. Fun fact about some of the mangroves that you can find in Florida. The black mangrove actually excretes salt on the back of the leaf so much so that you can see it and lick it. Although I don't recommend it. In fact, don't go around licking mangroves, please. Disclaimer. For our last film in this series, we're gonna harken back to a very famous work by Dr. Seuss known as the Lorax. In the Coral Axe, we're gonna follow the story of a developer who's going to learn about the importance 
of what coral reefs do for coastal ecosystems and how they can easily be destroyed. Let's watch the Coral Acts. At the far end of the beach where the fish swim no more and the reef is just a skeleton of what it was before, there lives the forgotten beach of the drifted away coral acts. And deep in the dry seagrass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the coral acts once stood. What was the coral acts and why was it there and why was it drifted away somewhere? From the far end where the old seagrass grows, the old twicer lives here. Ask him, he knows. If you want to hear the story, you must come very near, says the Twicer in a voice that's not very clear. Way back in the days when the shore was clean, and the ocean still had fish and the reef was pristine, the songs of the humpbacks rang out in space. One summer's noon I came to this glorious place, and I saw the reef, the reef, oh the bright colored reef. All my life I've been searching for reefs like these. The sight of their colors was prettier than seas. The flying fish flew and the manini fish grew. The colored fish gazed and the yellow tangs played. I had felt happy like no feeling before. I unloaded my boat and began the great chore. In no time at all I had cleared a great spot, but supplies to build with there were not. So I bought some concrete and I ordered some wood and I built a cabana the best that I could. Then I wanted to add color to its gray boring walls and with all this colorful coral there was no problem at all. But as I collected my coral I heard a great splash and out from the reef came the great coral axe. Mister, he said with a salty sneeze, I am the Coralax. I speak for the reefs. I speak for the reefs because the reefs have no tongues. I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset and he grinded his teeth. What's this you're doing with my beautiful reef? Look, Coralax, I said, there's no cause for a snort. I mean you no harm. I'm just building a resort. But all this construction is causing destruction. Look closer, sir, and you'll see it's not right to cause all this dirt runoff that's blocking the light. Their polyps need this light to make food and smothering them is really quite rude. These coral only have color when they're alive and out of the water, they will not survive. I repeat, cried the coral ax. I speak for the coral. Go away, I told him, I have no time to quarrel. But if figuring my resort was part of my plan, I knew I would need a few extra hands. I got on the phone and made a few calls and found some cheap labor in no time at all. Now I had many cabanas lining the shore, but it still wasn't enough. I wanted more. I built a 15-hole course for the guests to play and made sure it was fertilized once a day. For water activities, we had special shoes so they could walk on the reef whenever they choose. To have the best snorkeling, more fish we would need, so we attracted more schools with our delicious fish feed. Each night there was a buffet with every kind of fish, so that people could choose whatever they wished. But that coral ax about one thing was right. All the colorful coral on the walls had turned white. But we had twice as many guests as before. And that coral ax, he didn't show up anymore. But then suddenly, one day he was back at my door. He snapped, I am the coral ax. I speak for the reefs, which you seem to be killing as fast as you please. I've come to tell you of the herbivore fish, which you serve to your guests whenever they wish. These herbivore fish on algae do graze, but now that they're gone, the algae just stays. And without a healthy reef, there is reason to fear that the end of this beautiful place may be near. And with all your cups and forks and single-use plastic are creating a problem that is really quite drastic. And my poor green sea turtles are all getting crummies because they have plastic and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They have to find real food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, turtles, he cried, and he set them away. I, the Twicler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. Then one day I was watching the waves without a care, and the Coralax appeared and gave me a scare. I am the Coralax, I speak for the reefs that are disappearing, despite all my warnings that I don't think you're hearing. Now the dolphins and monk seals, as far as they roam, cannot find any food, so they must leave their home. And then I got mad, I got terribly mad. You keep saying that what I am doing is bad? If you're not going to stop yelling at me, leave this place now and just let me be. And at that very moment, we heard a loud crunch as the last of the coral reef was removed in one bunch. And as I heard that horrible sound, I felt my heart fall. 
since I knew that it contained the last polyps of them all. The Korolak said nothing, and with just a sad look and a sigh, he walked to the shore without saying goodbye. I'll never forget the grim look on his face as he drifted away from this once beautiful place. And then the guests all packed up and went home, and I was left in this abandoned place all alone. And all that the Korolaks left here in this mess was a small pile of dead coral with one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my cabanas have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, since you are here, the word of the Coral Act seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. So here, it's the last coral polyp in a bowl of salt water. To grow a new reef, you'll need this one for a starter. To have a successful resort, this reef you must protect. And you must teach your guests to treat it with respect. Let it flourish, protect it, and share what you've learned. Then the coral acts and all of the marine life may one day return. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Thank you for joining Youth Making Ripples on our Ecosystems Explorations virtual film series. We hope you learned a lot about our ocean habitats. I know I did. In fact, I think I'm going to be pretty popular at the parties with all the fun facts that I learned. We hope you join us for our future collections on our film series. Thank you and enjoy our blue planet. <laughs>